You are watching one of a series of videos giving an introduction to OrcaFlex. The first four of these videos, which we've called the fundamentals, are those that we would regard as prerequisites for looking at any of the other subsequent topics. If you are already familiar with these fundamentals, you may want to pick and choose the subsequent videos you watch based on your area of interest. If you're a complete beginner with OrcaFlex, I would strongly encourage you to watch the full series in order, as this will give you a good basic overview of the program, how to navigate it, and where to access and input data. It goes without saying that the quality of any OrcaFlex analysis is only as good as the quality of the input data, and that, of course, relies on the skill and experience of you, the user. These videos will help you to learn how to use OrcaFlex as one of your analysis tools, and I do hope that you find them educational and maybe even a little bit enjoyable too. In this first video, we will learn about the OrcaFlex user interface. OrcaFlex works by building a mathematical model of your system using a number of modular building blocks or objects. There are two standard objects always included in any model. These are the general and environment objects. The general object, as the name suggests, is where you go to modify general settings for a model such as the title or the units used. The environment object represents the environment data, such as the seawater depth, waves, and current. Before I go any further, I want to draw your attention to the OrcaFlex help file. This is a very comprehensive set of documentation available from the help menu, from the question mark icon in the toolbar, or via the F1 key. This is an extremely valuable source of information and includes descriptions about all aspects of OrcaFlex how to input and apply data, and has a full section specifically on the underlying theory. It is also contextual. So, for example, if you are in a particular data form and want to access the documentation which relates to that, you just need to select the question mark at the top right and then select the relevant part of the data form. Alternatively, just select the part of the data form you would like to look at the documentation about and press the F1 key. When you first start a new OrcaFlex model, you'll be presented with a window similar to the one I have on screen here. The main part of the window is the 3D view, and this is by default a wireframe view such as you would find in a typical 2D CAD package. You can see a blue and a brown line running across the screen and these represent the sea surface and the seabed respectively. To the left of the view is the model browser. This is where the objects present in a model are listed. And this also includes the general and environment objects already mentioned. And at the top of the screen are the status bar, the toolbar and the menu. If the model browser isn't open when you first start OrcaFlex, you can open it by pressing the F6 key or clicking on the icon to the right of the Save icon in the toolbar. Moving back to the 3D view, you can navigate around the view by using a combination of keystrokes and mouse actions. Panning across the view is done with the Shift key and the left mouse button. Rotating the view is done with the Control key and the left mouse button. Zooming in and out is done with the control key and the mouse wheel. And it's also possible to zoom in using the alt key while drawing a box with the left mouse button. Note that the view navigation can also be controlled using some specific options such as rotation by 90 degrees, moving to a plan view. These can be found in a number of places including up in the view menu. You will see that these options also all have shortcut keys and personally that's my preferred method for changing the view. For example, Control P moves to a plan view and Control E moves back to the elevation view. At the left side of each view is a set of view control buttons and these provide alternative methods for rotating and zooming a view. There's also an option here for changing to something called the shaded graphics mode. This changes the view so it has shading, perspective and hidden lines and objects removed. 
You can also see this has realistic renderings of the sea, the sky and the seabed. The final view control button is a set of view parameters such as the centre of rotation and the angle of the view. You can also switch between wireframe and shaded graphics here. Again there is a shortcut key for switching the view type and this is Control G. There is also a right mouse button pop-up menu. When in a view this gives you amongst other things a number of the view navigation options I've already mentioned. One of the most useful of these is called Reset to Default View. Selecting this will, by default, reset the view to a wireframe elevation. This option is accessed with the shortcut key Control T, and the default view can be set to your preferred view. For example, if you're primarily working in the plan view, you could change to this view, I've used the Control P shortcut to do this, and then use the option called Set as Default View, available in the pop-up menu, the view menu, or with the shortcut key Shift, Control and T. Having mentioned several keyboard shortcuts already, it's worth being aware that these are listed in a specific section of the documentation and you can access these directly from the Help menu. As previously mentioned, Orcaflex models consist of a number of building blocks, or objects, and these are inserted into a model from either the toolbar or the model menu. By way of demonstration, I will place a vessel object into my model. So I'm going to go to the toolbar, select new vessel. When I do this, the status bar changes and says place new vessel. And my cursor on the screen is now replaced with a crosshair. When I press the left mouse button, the vessel is placed on the position of the crosshair, although note that because this is a vessel object, Orcaflex applies some common sense and places the vessel on the sea surface vertically below the crosshair. With any other object, it would in fact be placed in the exact position of the crosshair. Once placed in the model, the vessel can be dragged around using the left mouse button, or with a double click on the vessel in the view, the data form for the vessel is opened. And in this data form, amongst other things, we can specify an exact position for that object. For example, if I change my X coordinate to minus 100 and move the data form so we can see the vessel, as soon as I press enter, we can see the position of the vessel is dynamically changing in the view. Note that having placed the vessel in my model, it's now listed over in the model browser at the left hand side. And an alternative way of accessing the same data form is double clicking on the vessel here in the model browser. This data form contains all the data that pertains to this specific instance of a vessel, such as its position. Whilst there is a further data form that contains data pertaining to this particular type of vessel. This is called the Vessel Types data form and is accessed, amongst other ways, from this option down at the bottom left. Other objects, such as lines, have a similar hierarchy of data forms. Now we will look at data forms in more detail in later videos, but before we close this one, it's worth highlighting the fact that there is already a great deal of data in this data form and we haven't actually input any of it in this particular example. Orcaflex has within it a great deal of default data from the depth of the sea to the type of waves to the mass and length of a vessel. This allows models to be built and simulations to be run very quickly, but you must be very careful about using default data where it does not accurately represent your system and especially where it's likely to have an impact on the calculation. The final part of the user interface I will introduce to you in this video is the global origin. This is the green set of axes at the sea surface in the 3D view. And these have uppercase X, Y and Z letters. And these represent the global origin of the model. When we first place an object into a model, 
its position will be relative to this axis system. And if we open up the vessel data form again and set the vessel position to 0, 0, 0, note that the vessel moves over the global origin. The global axes can be set to be on or off as a user preference and this is controlled in the preferences menu. Here you can see there are a number of other sets of axes and we will go on to talk about these in later videos. After watching this video you should now have a basic understanding of the Orcaflex user interface. The next video in the series will focus on the Orcaflex objects.